In Dallas, Oswald's co-workers were eagerly awaiting the motorcade. We were looking out towards Elm Street. So he walked up and asked us, said, what is everybody looking for? What is everybody waiting on? So we told him we were waiting on the president to come by. He put his hand in his pocket and laughed and walked away. So I don't know where he went or if he went upstairs or downstairs or where. Oswald rode the elevator up to the sixth floor, where he spent the morning filling book orders. In Fort Worth, the president was headed to the airport for the short flight to Dallas. About 12 o'clock, Oswald's co-workers went down to lunch. Oswald shouted for them to send the elevator back up. By now, President Kennedy and his wife had landed at Love Field. The welcome was warm. On the sixth floor of the depository, someone had screened off a corner window with boxes. Oswald's prints would later be found on some of them, including the boxes arranged to support the sniper's rifle. Two witnesses spotted a man with a rifle at the sixth floor window. They assumed he was there to protect the president. Oswald later claimed that at this time he was eating lunch with two fellow workers and had then gone to buy a Coke. But his co-workers denied having lunch with Oswald. Some witnesses thought they saw two men on the sixth floor, evidence, if true, that there was a conspiracy. At 12.23, Amateur cameraman Charles Bronson panned across the depository. Frontline had this footage scientifically enhanced to see if a second man could be seen on the sixth floor. Well, the left window, when you look at a single frame, appears to have a person standing there. Uh, you can see the shoulders and perhaps the arms, and some people said that in successive frames, uh, somebody's walking back and forth. But when we process the image to reduce the grain noise, we found that all of the images throughout the frame look approximately the same. And so in that sixth floor window, that is not anybody walking around, that's grain noise walking around. And this film, shot by Robert Hughes, shows the motorcade approaching Dealey Plaza. Hughes stops filming for a few seconds and then starts again just as the limousine passes in front of the depository. On the Hughes film, there are a lot of things to see, and on the fifth floor in particular, we see an employee of the book depository raise his right arm right there as he waves to the motorcade passing just under the building. Uh, now we move to the sixth floor, and we observe in the arched window that is adjacent to the sniper's nest a uh, form that uh, some people have said is human-like in appearance. And when we ran the enhanced film in motion, that human form uh, disappears and we conclude there is no human form in that window. We do also conclude that there is a movement in the sixth floor corner window indicating the presence of a person. Just seven seconds before the first shot is fired, something moves in the corner window. In the window below, Harold Norman raises his arm and waves to the president. We were sitting on the fifth floor, right directly on the sixth floor window. And the shots came from above, and that was gone. The shots were sounding, boom, click, click, boom, click, click, boom, click, click. So that was three shots fired right above us, and we were sitting on the fifth floor. Frame by frame, the tragedy unfolds in the 21 seconds of 8mm film shot by Abraham Zapruder. As the motorcade rounds the corner, it slows. In the background, a little girl runs beside the limousine. Suddenly, there's a gunshot. Governor Connolly hears it and turns. The little girl stops dead and looks around. Three seconds later, a second shot. A bullet has passed through the president's throat. It hits Connolly in the back and he starts falling. Mrs. Kennedy turns to her husband. Something's wrong. She looks into his face. The fatal headshot. The exact number and timing of the shots have been argued over endlessly. 
but there is a growing consensus that the Zapruder film shows three shots were fired in about eight seconds. <laughs> 